delay and delay, NASA has now given up on the Boeing Starliner. In fact, the national agency has made a diplomatic maneuver, which is reflected in the billion-dollar contracts that NASA awarded SpaceX. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. First, some news. What happened to Boeing Starliner's crew flight test? Boeing Starliner's second attempt to lift off on May 17 was one more time canceled. The crude debut of the capsule has been pushed back an additional four days or May 21. The mission is called Crew Flight Test, CFT, which will send NASA astronauts Suni Williams and Butch Wilmore to the International Space Station for a roughly eight-day stay. The excuse is a small helium leak in Starliner's service module, according to a release from Boeing. The teams now are targeting a launch date of no earlier than 4.43 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Tuesday, May 21, to complete additional testing, the release said. May 6 marks the first Starliner launch attempt of 2024 on a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on Florida's Space Coast. But ULA joint venture between Boeing and Lockheed Martin had a plot twist just two hours before launch. Indeed, the team noticed a buzzing valve in the Atlas V Centaur upper stage. Well, it sounds reasonable that an old-fashioned rocket would sometimes run into trouble at a critical moment, right? Just then, Boeing, NASA, and ULA initially pushed the launch target back to May 10, then delayed it to May 17 after determining that the troublesome valve needed to be replaced, an operation that required rolling the Atlas V off the pad to an assembly facility at Cape Canaveral. As they said, on May 8, the Atlas V was hauled off the launch pad and moved back to ULA's nearby vertical integration facility where the suspect valve was replaced. Tests confirmed the rocket is good to go for another launch try. While the second attempt's date was coming so closer, another excuse appeared. If the previous error was in ULA's rocket, this time it was a helium leak in Boeing's spacecraft. The unrelated helium leak in the Starliner's propellant pressurization system was noted during the countdown of the first attempt, but it remained within safe limits for flight. After the Atlas V and Starliner were rolled back to the VIF for the oxygen valve replacement, managers decided to take a closer look at the helium issue. The newfound helium leak, they added, has been traced to a flange on a single reaction control system thruster in Starliner's service module. These thrusters don't burn helium, but the gas allows them to fire properly. NASA and Boeing are developing spacecraft testing and operational solutions to address the issue, Boeing wrote in the update. As a part of the testing, Boeing will bring the propulsion system up to flight pressurization just as it does prior to launch, and then allow the helium system to vent naturally to validate existing data and strengthen flight rationale. The Atlas V and Starliner remain in the vertical integration facility at Space Launch Complex 41. NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, still in pre-flight quarantine, returned to Houston on May 10 to spend extra time with their families as pre-launch operations progressed. The duo will fly back to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida in the coming days. Although CST-100 being postponed is nothing new for more than a decade, the incident is once again still enough to attract public attention. In fact, we all aim at one question, with all these cost overruns and delays, why doesn't the government just cancel the Boeing's contract? The question has been discussed a lot since the public realized Boeing's weakness. While the government always blamed its fear of monopoly, we all implicitly understood that everything is even more complicated than that. Perhaps you have heard at least once about the report on the commercial crew program by NASA's Office of Inspector General OIG. Yeah, this report highlighted several issues with the commercial crew program that, it warns, could hinder NASA's ability to access and utilize the International Space Station in the near future. Most notable is a change to Boeing's contract that the OIG concluded was largely unnecessary. In short, NASA paid Boeing nearly $300 million more than originally planned in its commercial crew contract, in part because of agency concerns that the company might drop out of the program. OIG also criticized NASA for not giving SpaceX the other company with a commercial crew contract, an opportunity to offer its own proposal to address any gap in crew access to the ISS. In our judgment, contacting both providers would have been a prudent approach to maximize the agency's options while also ensuring fairness, the report concluded.
Another example of nepotism in the national agencies as culture is the affair in 2023 when the World Trade Organization, WTO, ruled that Boeing received at least $5.3 billion in improper aid from the U.S. government, including money for research and development from NASA. The subsidies gave the U.S. company an unfair advantage over its European rival, Airbus. Europe had claimed that Boeing received illegal subsidies worth $19.1 billion between 1989 and 2006. Boeing was selected by NASA as the prime contractor for the International Space Station in 1993. The company is also NASA's main partner in the national critical projects such as building Space Launch System or Artemis. The long-term collaboration between Boeing and NASA offers the two parties various benefits, including the underlying benefits and even ones that they do not want to be announced. However, this created a perverse incentive. Under the so-called Cost Plus contract, Boeing has milked billions in tax from NASA, which NASA's administrator Bill Nelson called a plague. Under the pressure from the budget cut policy of Congress, the national agency is compulsory to save itself first. It explains why the fixed price contract has been applied. Through those examples, we can see clearly the undeniable influence of Boeing on NASA and even other political entities. For that reason, theoretically, it would be hard for NASA to stop collaboration with Boeing, but they can do it on Starliner. In reality, three months after CES-T100's first successful test in May 2022, NASA awarded five more astronaut missions to Elon Musk's SpaceX. It appears that this is an implicit conversion of missions from Starliner to Dragon. This way, NASA will not upset its important partner Boeing, but will also ensure the effectiveness of the program. The additional five missions benefit SpaceX more than $1.4 billion or $288 million per mission to the International Space Station. It comes after an extension in February 2022 that added three flights to the contract, Crew 7 through Crew 9, for $776 million or $258.7 million per flight. The total value of SpaceX's CCAP contract awarded in 2014 to complete the development and testing of Crew Dragon, followed by six operational missions, is now $4.93 billion. The national agency said in a statement that the contract extension allows NASA to maintain an uninterrupted U.S. capability for human access to the space station until 2030. That comes from the combination of SpaceX's extended CCAP contract along with Boeing's own CCAP contract for six flights of its CST-100 Starliner commercial crew vehicle. NASA officials have previously stated that once Starliner is certified to carry NASA astronauts, they will alternate between Starliner and Crew Dragon missions to the ISS. That would start with the first operational Starliner mission in the fall of 2023, assuming a successful crewed test flight of Starliner now scheduled for no earlier than February. By contrast, NASA has yet to announce the purchase of additional Starliner missions, but based on the current context, it now seems probable that there are no additional crewed missions to award to Boeing. With the plan to retire the ISS in 2030, the national agency appears to have booked all of the rides it needs for a station lifetime into 2030. Additionally, no matter how long Starliner delays, this also does not harm NASA. The fixed price contract has saved them all. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.